Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. I am your host, James Salcedo, and tonight I am talking about paranormal patterns and uh, talking about proof. As always, you can find all shows and social media links on, and other ways to contact me on the podcast page. Um, always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you are here for the live streams on Discord, or if you listen on the podcast or YouTube feeds, or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before uh, Trouble Minds Radio comes on. And as always, I want to thank Michael Strange, a host of Trouble Minds Radio, for putting these shows up on the station and giving me a chance to be there. So um, if you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always uh, share the show with others and rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. You can uh, join the Patreon page where there will usually be, whenever possible, one extra episode per month over there of uh, True Paranormal Stories in the Web. And you can also just send one-time donations to PayPal. Um, and the help is never expected, but always appreciated, as there are always expenses in making these shows from equipment to uh, research, research materials to travel expenses in some cases. Um, as you all know, part of why I was quiet for so long was I had to get a new computer and get all that the settings on that adjusted and, and uh, had to get some help with that as well. And get all that figured out and uh so just now sort of hoping to get back into a regular pattern here regular schedule after this weekend and uh but yeah so i think that takes care of all that so um this is going to be a short week of shows if you're listening to the podcast feed or youtube feeds uh just because of um uh, my recording software they're doing uh, maintenance on it over the weekend that i'm recording this so um there's just going to be two shows that will be coming out in this next couple of days, and then hopefully uh, next Friday I can start to my usual uh, six shows per weekend recording schedule. So, But I thought for this couple of shows, it would be good to talk about a couple of things that have been on my mind a lot lately, uh, just based on, not directly as far as I'm not going to, to um, say any names or, or do anything like that because it's not um, nice and not right, I don't think. But just uh, based on some things I've seen in social media over the last few week, couple of weeks, few weeks, and um, so that's going to be two episodes here. This first one is about proof, as it relates to the paranormal. So, and I um, went ahead and I made an outline using uh, AI to help me sort of get through this um, this topic here because I probably probably could ramble on it, but um, I think it might be better and. Uh, a little bit calmer, maybe, if I have an outline to go with. Otherwise, I might, uh, um, yeah, might say some things I regret later. So, but, uh, so getting to the document here, let's see here. Yeah, click on that. Okay. So, um, I mean, it, when it comes to the paranormal, and um, I basically uh, put a question to Claude, the AI there. Uh, why is it? Uh, difficult to establish clear proof for the paranormal, uh, supernatural and or unexplained. And so it, came, it gave a, a list here of some some points that I'm going to uh, to basically summarize here and then address as we go. And um, love to also if any of you there listening here live, if you have any comments or questions on this or thoughts on this. Uh, you're welcome to uh, put them in the chat, and I'll I'll read them out uh, as soon as I can in the show. But um, so the first uh, point here it makes is that uh, there's a lack of reproducibility, and we've heard this before that the paranormal or or ghosts or whatever any kind of entities, whatever it is that's out there that is um, causing these seemingly random events, they don't. Often they 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 don't um, act on command. They they have their own 
sort of either if it's a consciousness, then they have their own plans, their own motives, uh, or if it's not, then it could just be various environmental situations there causing things. But anyway, uh, many reported paranormal experiences, it says here in the summary, are singular events that cannot be consistently uh, repl replicated under controlled conditions, making it challenging to study them scientifically. And the controlled conditions thing, that is important because so often these things happen everywhere, from inside regular houses to offices to just factories to any place outside. I mean, it, the, there's, and it's really can, this can apply to all these, all the things that we talk about in the show here and other shows, um, ghosts, whatever they may be, aliens, whatever they may be, uh, cryptids, whatever they may be, uh, all these things that, that again, science, mainstream science says don't really exist. But um, next point here, it says subjectivity of experiences. Uh, paranormal experiences are often highly subjective and personal, making it difficult to verify or validate them objectively. So I, I understand that. I think that's a point, but also that goes back to sort of not trusting what people uh, say or think or experience. And I, I do agree you have to be somewhat skeptical, but also being so much so to where you're not willing to consider that this, whatever this is that happened could have actually happened to someone is also, I think, a um, dangerous sort of way to go to go forward. If if you're not going to consider possibilities, then um, they're sort of closing off, uh, limiting what what you will take as as any kind of new information uh, into to your your view of things. So uh, again. Um, that's just my thoughts here. And this is all my, my thoughts based on the summary and everything. So I could be wrong about all this, but, um, but I do definitely have <laughs> opinions on this as well. So, um, or thoughts on this anyway. So going to the next point here, uh, I lost my spot. Okay. Uh, three limitations of scientific methods, current scientific methods and technologies may not be advanced enough to detect or measure uh, the alleged forces or energies associated with paranormal phenomena. And I think that is accurate. I'm wondering how long that will be the case. I think that we're starting to see possibly just technology, more and more of that that's coming out that is supposedly able to pick up things. Um, and then, of course, there's a whole debate on whether that's true or not. But I think that um, I really wonder if, if that will always be the case because of just how, how much technology is advancing, how much interest there is in the paranormal these days, um, even though there is still some stigma, which is actually the, uh, the topic for the next show I'm going to do after this one. Um, I wonder about that, how long that will last, if it will always last. Is it, is it that the paranormal can't ever be completely explained? I think that's also a possibility. Um, I think that that's. I have no idea which, what's what's going to happen with that. So, but I think that's a good point uh, here to, to mention. Uh, next one says, uh, let's see here, Conf confounding variables. It says, in many cases, there may be uh, alternative explanations for seemingly paranormal events, such as sensory illusions, misperceptions, or hoaxes, which can be difficult to rule out definitively. Um, I would also include in that uh, um, uh, some electromagnetic fields that are generated by wires, by, by human-made electronics, can, um, from what I've heard, they, they give off energy, electromagnetic energy, and can either fuel paranormal activity or give the illusion of paranormal activity. So. That is a very valid point there, and um, I think you have to sort of do your best whenever, whenever possible to try to rule things out um, before you sort of uh, are sure that it's paranormal, unless there's other factors involved there. I think that's also um, something to consider, but 
yeah, there's definitely, and we, we all have times where we think we see things and then we go back and, and really not sure that we really did. So um, not saying at all that humans, you know, the human mind isn't, or senses aren't, um, are, are not saying at all that they're perfect, but also I don't think we should totally throw out uh, what we pick up from those senses either. So um, moving on to the next one here. Uh, and this is, of course, important here. I, I, um, and this was confirmation bias. It says, believers in the paranormal may be more likely to interpret ambiguous or unexplained events as evidence of the supernatural, while skeptics may dismiss the same events uh, as having natural explanations. So again, that's pointing out the extremes uh, that people can go to. And in some cases, it's somewhat understandable why they would go there for their own reasons and in different ways. Um, their worldviews, just what they've been through, um, and just all those things, all those factors can play in. I do think that um, everyone reacts to the paranormal in different ways. And some of those ways are just to shut down to it, to not want to believe it exists or to to um, engage with it at all because it's so confusing and or frightening and just goes against everything that some people believe about the nature of reality. So uh, that's a definitely the case. I think that's part of why I love um, the idea that uh, I picked up really from uh, listening to uh, Troubled Minds of taking in all these ideas and possibilities without sort of um, subscribing or, or getting stuck on any of them uh, and just seeing what what plays out. And that's sort of my addition to that. But And taking in information as you, as you go and uh, basing your, your thoughts and ideas of your own on, on that new information. So, um, but yeah. Definitely, uh, it's it goes both ways. That confirmation bias thing, I think, goes both ways. So, as it says there in the summary. Uh, let me see here. Moving on to the next one here. Uh, lack of consensus. There is no widely accepted definition of what constitutes proof of the paranormal, as different individuals and groups may have varying standards of evidence. And that is one of the things I've sort of been thinking about lately is how some people can sort of pick up one thing or two things, um, audio or video or whatever, in a location, and they can be certain just on those things, not even anything else, that they've caught proof of, of a ghost or a spirit at a location. When... Um, Really, what they've caught is proof of possibly of unexplainable events. So, and it could be any number of things, uh, whether it's a glitch in the the camera or the, or the recorder, or it could even be different kinds of entities that are not spirits of people that have passed. I go back to that all the time, where I used to think that's what ghosts were, and then the only other option at the time that I thought when I first started looking into all these things um, was residual energy, just images and sounds of events past involving people. And, and those two were the only options. And now I think there's just a lot more um, variables as far as time anomalies, time and space anomalies. I mean, possibly even multidimensional and multi, multi-universal anomalies. Um, just all these various things that we don't have uh, figured out yet that could be be causing uh, the paranormal. So, um, so yeah, let me get back to the file here. I'm getting through these faster than I thought, but um, I will we'll just stick with this uh, topic and do uh, cover that next topic on the next show. Uh, let me see here. The next one it says um, philosophical and Theological uh, debates says the existence of paranormal and or supernatural 
phenomena is often intertwined with philosophical and theological questions about the nature of reality, consciousness, and the divine, which can lead to differing interpretations of alleged evidence. And that goes back to people's, um, each person's sort of what they've experienced and what they, how they think of the world. Uh, again, going, also going back to labels, ghosts, aliens, um, angels, demons, whatever, other entities are out there. That's all, some of those are, words are, are more tied to religions than others, but they're still used by people for different things. So, um, so yeah, that's definitely a, another complicating factor there, I think, that is a valid point to, um, to talk about there. And, but also I think we can all sort of take in the evidence of whatever paranormal is out there, whatever events are out there, entities or situations, and, and still use those different words just with understanding, understanding that we may be talking about the same things, or maybe not, but still um, talk about these things and see what comes out of those conversations, I think is, that's a good way to go as well. So, um, but yeah, that's definitely, there's a lot, I mean, everyone has the different, different uh, experiences and different upbringings, and those can have effects on how they view everything, including the paranormal. So, uh, let me see here. So that's basically the end of that. It says, um, the summary here says, due to these challenges, the scientific community uh, generally maintains a high standard of evidence for accepting claims of paranormal or supernatural phenomena re uh, requiring rigorous, repeatable, and independently verifiable evidence before considering such claims as proven. However, this high bar for proof continues to be a point of contention between believers and skeptics. And so that's where that, uh, that summary ends there. And um, I think it's a, a good way to sort of bring all, that, all those points together and summarize it all. Um, again, pointing out the, the, the extremes on either side there. And uh, so, yeah, that's... That was certainly what I wanted to bring up because I've seen so much online about um, basically how can anyone believe in anything paranormal, aliens or ghosts, when there's no real evidence. And yet there's people that say, well, I've caught evidence. I've caught things on cameras or, or audio recorders or, or whatever. And But then, of course, the, uh, the response to that is, well, then it must be, it must be fake. Um, because there's so much fakery out there as well. That is a, a major problem uh, that I don't think is ever going to, to go away. I think um, the personal nature of experiences, I think that's the one thing I, I've come to really respect is I'm not as interested in, the, in that evidence, in that supposed proof of whatever is going on. I'm more interested in, in people's own experiences with that and their thoughts on that and what it means to them and, and just exchanging information about um, each other's experiences and seeing how that all plays off of each other and uh, what we can learn from that. Uh, I've learned so much just from doing this show, whether it's from uh, having people on to talk about their experiences to finding accounts of experiences online uh, all over the web there. And um, I mean, that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite things, is finding and sharing these experiences with everyone to see what the, what you all think. And uh, so that's why I always make sure I try to do at least two episodes of that per week. Uh, if it didn't take time to sort of to do all that digging, I, I may do more. But um, obviously, you can only do what you can do. So. And the other things I think are important too, the book reviews and the um, the looks into places themselves that ha are reported to have activity. Um, I think that's all, they're all good. All three types of episodes that I've been doing recently, they're all good ways, different filters and different uh, ways to 
look at this through. Um, when trying to investigate this and learn what we can about it. So, um, so yeah, that's basically all I had for that. Again, looking forward to getting back to a, um, a full schedule next weekend. And um, so also I want to thank everyone that has ever been part of the show. I do want to thank um, a good friend that we recently, uh, other friends and I recently um, lost, uh, Rohan, for making the show what it has, has become um, with all his hope, with all the audio and editing and everything. Um, always be missed, never be forgotten. And uh, just wanted to put that in there. Uh, I couldn't, couldn't figure out where I wanted to put that in the show, but uh, I think this is a good place to do it. And definitely go back and check out the archives of the show, and you'll find a few different episodes where he was on, and I'm sure you'll agree that they are, uh, they are and he is amazing. And um, so, yeah, just wanted to put that out there. Um, plans for the show, again, more True Paranormal Stories from the Web. As always, definitely always looking for people to, to come on or um, to send in their stories of their experiences uh, to share on the show because it's, it's, it is um, amazing to find these stories online, but it's even more amazing when I can get them from people that I have some kind of contact with. Uh, and then, of course, the, the best way to do that uh, I think in terms of a conversation is to have people on the show. And we've done that with um, several people. And so I'd always be happy to do that again with anyone that wants to join me. And it doesn't have to be on the usual recording days, those those recording nights, uh, Fridays and Saturdays. If uh, you really want to talk about your experiences on the show, uh, just let me know and we'll work out the right day and time for both of us that we can do and uh, record that. And that'll just be an extra show that I'll put out there. And uh, so that's always something I want to keep reminding everyone. I've had a lot of great people that have have done that, that have been on the show. And uh, looking forward to doing that again, hopefully in the future. And um, so, yeah, please remember also to listen to the uh, Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. It's on all day, all night. and. Uh, all kinds of great shows in there, uh, not, not even counting uh, Trouble Minds, but just besides that, all throughout the day, the shows from, from me and then from everyone else on the station, um, and even a couple that have been guests on the show. Uh, again, um, Matt's Hall, Temple of the Owl, that's a great, another great show. Uh, Jen, the Arcane Observer, um, is, has her own show on there. And uh, I'm going to stop there because I'm going to leave out others if I do that, if I keep going. So I don't want to do that. But, um, and yeah, so that's basically it for this one. I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. It was sort of um, difficult to figure out how I want to do it. I think the summary did help. And that's how I'm going to do the next show. So um, love to hear your thoughts on this and any other topic I cover on the show. You can always reach me through Discord. Um, or through my Gmail, and that's uh, Salcido Paranormal at gmail.com. And that's S A L S I D O uh, Paranormal at gmail.com. Uh, and happy to hear from you all and, and take in any comments or questions and, or topic suggestions, as I always say at the beginning of the shows, um, to see what we can do for future shows, uh, special shows. So, again, thank you all for being here and being patient uh, during these times when I've had to stop or slow down on making the shows and uh talk to you all next time on Salcedo Paranormal. Take care. <laughs>